Um, okay, so you made this yourself. Uh, yeah, well, with a little help from the internet. What, with all the weird things going on? The birds attacking the house, blood seeming to seep out the walls? I figured it was time for somebody to do something. What exactly is it that you're planning to do? Well, it's pretty involved. But in layman's terms, if there's anything in this house that's evil, or anything or anyone without a soul, this baby right here will suck it right up. Well, here we go. Will you look at this? Page 77. Oh, if you think that's hot, check out page 214. It's got to be true, right? If it wasn't, they wouldn't publish it. Oh. That this book is a smash. You have to be so proud. I'm proud. I'm petrified. And you should be, too. When the people of Harmony get a gander at this book and realize that we've exposed all their secrets, they'll turn us into toast. If Hecuba hasn't fried us first, of course. Tell the worries too much. Wow. Look at that place. That's the Crane Mansion. We're coming to you live from the grounds of the magnificent Crane Estate in Harmony. As the party of the new millennium kicks into high gear, a bash thrown by Gwen Hotchkiss for Ethan Crane and his new fiancé, Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald. For those of you who haven't heard, I say new fiancé because Gwen was recently jilted by Ethan, who was stolen away by Teresa, who happens to be the daughter of the Crane housekeeper. Obviously, Ethan believes in keeping it in-house. One thing we can be thankful for, Tim Tim. We're not in harmony tonight. Once that Crane party is over, so many lives will be changed. Oh. Doesn't Mama look beautiful? She looks absolutely fabulous. Mm. Seeing her all dressed up, so glamorous. I know. <laughs> My brother's in that big suit. And um, Ethan doesn't look so bad either. <laughs> and Chad. I love that the two of you are here to celebrate with us. Something is still wrong, though, right? I can't help it. I have this feeling. When midnight comes, my dress is gonna turn into rags. The limousine that came in at pumpkin, and all my dreams will be shattered. Father, I know why this is difficult for you. Oh, difficult? Making a toast to my son's happiness? Not in the least. No, I, I know you're disappointed in my choosing Teresa. Oh, nonsense, boy. I can never be disappointed. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, you know. Future of the Cranes. Ooh. Flesh of my flesh. Blood of my blood. That's what you think, Julian. It's so infuriating that Julian has not read that headline. I don't know how much more of this party I can take when they're watching Ethan and Teresa hang all over each other. It's killing me. No, it's not. No, it is making you stronger, so just try and stay calm. How can I when it looks as though your plan is just going to fizzle out? What? Everything is in place. I emailed the tabloid. They sent the reporter out here with a paper, and now Julian has But it. he hasn't read it, and what if he doesn't? He will. I have not come this far to fail. Look, the only thing that is going to fizzle out here tonight is Ethan's engagement to Teresa. I'm not leaving this house until Mr. High and Mighty Julian Crane is brought to his knees. The only person I feel sorry for is Grace Bennett. Ivy... The girl in the story, the rich girl, was you? Yeah. I was the girl who fell in love with the boy from town. I feel so awful. If I had realized that the first love that you were talking about was yours, 
I never would have said that if the girl truly loved the boy, she wouldn't have let her father separate them. But I did. I let my father keep us apart. How terrible for you. Yeah. It has been sheer hell. And in all the years since, I have never stopped thinking about you. Excuse me. Hello. Is this Louise Lopez Fitzgerald? <laughs> yeah, it is. I have something that I think you'll be very interested to hear. It's on the phone, honey. It's me. Some guy says he's got something I'll be interested to hear. What do you want, Alistair? I have what I want, Eve. The tape you made when you hypnotized Sheridan to get to the root of her nightmares. Oh, God. I killed Martin Fitzgerald. I killed Louise's father. So what's so interesting you want me to hear? you enjoy the party with Sheridan. Celebrate your sister's big night. Yeah, it is a big night. For us, too. If not now, then later. <laughs> Definitely later. Let me see what this guy wants, and then maybe we'll take off. Yeah, I'm back now. Sorry for the interruption. So what is it that you wanted me to hear?
person of her own on the dance floor. Yep, yep. Chad is right. You two have fun. Thank you for the chocolate. It really worked. That's what I need it here. Think your fiance can get one of those hugs too? <laughs> well, I could stay like this till the party's over. But my father's gonna be making a speech in the main house. Well, hey, one quick dance and then uh, we'll be inside, all right? Sure. I missed you. Every time I'm away from you, I miss you. I love you, Ethan. You make me so happy. Um, I, uh, trust you're not tiring of waiting for Mr. Crane. I'd hate for you to leave before you have a chance to tell him whatever uh, important thing this is. Julian grabbed my paper and took off. He did? Do you know if he read it? I don't think so. But he will. Oh, he will. I said I'm calling again to see how you're feeling, Charity. I'm sorry, Miguel. I can barely hear you. What's that noise? It's Reese. He brought over this, this weird machine. A machine? Yeah, he said it would capture the evil spirits or anything without a soul in the house. Reese comes up with the weirdest stuff. But I'm glad he's there with you and Kay. Um, don't worry about me. I'm just fine. No, I'll leave in a few minutes. And I was going to spend the night in your room again tonight. You know, so you don't have to be afraid of anything and you can get a good night's sleep. Okay, just don't worry about me. Have a good time. Kay and Reese will look after me. Don't worry. You were supposed to deliver charity to me. Do you remember that? You were supposed to bring her up here to me, right? I have plans for her. This is it. The final destruction of charity. Burn, baby. Burn. <laughs> you really want to disobey me, girl? Do you? Think hard. Think really hard about your soul. Because you're never going to get it back if you don't bring charity up here. A-S-A-P. Well, I need time. I mean, I can't bring her up here until Reese leaves. Yeah. With that dreadful contraption of his. That contraption of his scares me. And Reese says that it can capture people without a soul, and that's me. He also says that it can destroy evil, and that's you. So what are we going to do? Huh. The contraption is a farce. Now I want you to get that idiot out of this house. Because I've got to destroy charity before Miguel gets back. What if Reese's machine really works? Well then, my dear. You and I are both done for. Did you know this about the cranes? Oh, oh that's uh, shocking. I've never read anything like it. It's positively scandalous and altogether wonderful. Oh. Wouldn't it be great to be in Harmony when your book hits the shelves? It'd be like 4th of July. Fireworks everywhere. Shh. Our citizens will be out for our blood. That's not going to happen, Princess. Don't forget, the last page in Impassions contains your spell. See if I'd forget. The spell says that the readers will forget anything they've read. Yes, well. But what if the spell doesn't work? The townspeople will have us undrawn and quartered. It'll make heck of a driving a stake through our hearts seem downright jolly. <laughs> That's not funny, Princess. No, oh, gallows humor, lad. A vain attempt to avoid what's really going on. All this hoopla is just too much for me. At least it means Abby won't have to worry about anyone looking for them at the motel. That place looks like nobody ever goes there. Hmm. Timmy wonders why. You 
heard the phrase, anyone who's anyone? Well, they're almost all here at this Smash Bash. What I have to wonder is, are they here to celebrate Ethan Crane's engagement? Or have they come expecting something to happen? Something so big, people will be talking about it for years to come. Where were you the night of Ethan Crane's engagement party when... Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I have a feeling that that reporter is right. Alistair Crane isn't going to let the heir to his fortune marry the housekeeper's daughter. Something definitely is going to happen to me. And I think it's going to happen tonight. I want you to know the truth, Grace. If I had it to do over again, I would never give up the boy I loved. It was the biggest mistake of my life. I think this is getting a little too personal. No, I agree. I don't think this is a proper subject for an engagement party. Love is the perfect subject for an engagement party, and besides, Grace is interested. I probably want to know if the boy's still around. Is he still out there? Well, he is. Well, do you ever see him around? Yes, I see him. Not enough. He's married. And you never had children with him? I, I don't know why I said that. It, it just popped into my head. Yes, I understand that sometimes you and your niece have premonitions. But sometimes they're wrong. Ivy, please forgive me. Of course, you never had a child with him. I think not another word. So, what does the wife of this man think? I mean, does she know about you? Have the two of you ever talked about this? Who am I talking to? That's of no importance. And neither is this phone call. I'm not wasting your time, I assure you. What I have to say will be of enormous interest to you. Okay, I'm listening. Tell whoever it is that we have important things to do. There's some time for chit-chat. You're not saying anything. I was preparing something for you. Brace yourself for a shock, young man. I'd love to rid the world of that Reese person. No. You promised you wouldn't. Well, a girl can change her mind, can't she? And if you don't stop whining and complaining, maybe I will change my mind about giving you your soul back. No! Please, no. All right, then. You do as you're told. Go downstairs and get Reese out of this house before Miguel comes back. Move it! We haven't got all night. How's it going? Bust any evil? Nothing yet. Downstairs is pretty clean. Whoa. It's registering someone with no soul. Uh oh. Tabby has been recognized. Oh no. Oh look. It's the author. Oh, you wrote Hidden Passions? Oh, yes, yes, oh. I am. And him, in the book, he's supposed to be a doll. But he's really alive. Tim is what you call a living doll. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you the cutest thing? You're not too bad yourself. <laughs> but the author is the focus of today. Tabitha Lennox, isn't she incredible? Oh. Timmy personally knows each and every character in that book. I think Timmy better cool his jets and hop down from there. We don't want people in harmony getting wind of where we are now, do we? What you wrote, is it really true? You'll have to read to the end of the book to find out. <laughs> you better hope that curse is going to work so that they forget what they've read if they don't. We're in deep. Try it. 
and every word is true. Harmony is the pain place of the new millennium. I know what cool your cats means. Jimmy's trying to sell the book. Real bell full of money, princess. Remember? Ian Patchens would make the perfect Valentine's gift. <laughs> The buzz around here now is whether or not the patriarch of the family, Alistair Crane, will make an appearance. But whoever it is, they got some crazy idea that I'm in for a shock. Louise? Uh, Mr. Crane's about to offer a toast to Teresa and Ethan. Teresa wants the family to be with her. Yeah, just hold on a sec. This won't take long. No, Louise, don't keep your sister waiting. I mean, a, a toast to Ethan and Teresa is more important than anything some stranger has to say. And it's probably just a telemarketer trying to sell you something. Eva's right. Telling you you're in for a big shock is probably just some scare tactic to get you to buy something. Yeah. Yeah, who might argue with the most beautiful woman in the world? No, I'll just take that from you and handle it, and I'll get your phone back to you. Sooner we make that toast, the sooner we can get back to the cottage. Would you two come on? <laughs> Alistair? Who else? And you disappoint me, Eve. I heard you practically frothing at the mouth trying to get Luis off the phone. But it changes nothing. In fact, it's only made me more determined than ever to see Luis learns the truth about my daughter. Are you friendly with the wife of the man that you were in love with? We'd better get out of here before Ivy goes too far. Grace, I just found a spot for you in my dad's car. Come on. Oh, Sam, that's so sweet, but can it wait? I mean, I'm really interested in Ivy's past life. <laughs> I'm flattered. So, are you friends with the man's wife? Yes. Yes, I am. But she doesn't know anything about it. All these years and she's never been told? I mean, to be lied to like that, how awful. But she didn't know anything. How could it be awful? Oh, well, but, uh, Ivy, it's not your place to tell her, but for her husband to not ever tell her? I, I just have no respect for a man like that. None at all. Grace, there's something I need to tell you. Dirt about the crane, the ruffles, the venice, and all the rest. The good, the bad, and the downright sinful. Every last word is true, as told by the most beautiful witch from the netherworld. Zip your mouth and get down from there. Get out of here while the going's good. And before Hecuba finds out where we are, don't forget that witch still has the powers. Timmy's all set. Is he going to the movie? Something he's always wanted to see. A movie? Oh, good idea. That would be a distraction to keep my mind off my troubles. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today, but I want to thank you for this wonderful turnout. You're a grand group, and uh, I hope you all enjoy the book. That's the hotel for you and I. I can't figure out why that place is so familiar to me. Come on, Jim. You haven't seen my old knives, have you, Father? Oh, wait. There's one. Need sharpening. Oh, by the way, 
The old lady and the little boy I rented a room to seemed very nice. I gave him the room with a special shower. What do you want to tell me, Sam? Do you know the man that I was talking about? Yes. Do you understand it? Understand. How he can have a close relationship with his wife and not tell her about Ivy. I mean, that makes the, the marriage a complete sham. Unless, of course, it wasn't that close to begin with. No. Their relationship is very close. The man loves his wife so deeply. She is, uh, she is the world to him. And he would never do anything to upset her. Never. Well, then, why didn't he tell her the truth? Well, he didn't tell the truth at first because uh, she was going through a very difficult time and he wasn't sure that she could accept it. So you said it first. What about later? Well, she got stronger. He just felt that too much time had passed. And he didn't want her to think that he had lied to her on purpose. He didn't want to hurt her. You seem to know an awful lot about this man. Is he a close friend? If I could have your attention, everyone. Um, ah, my father's going to make a toast in the main house, so if you could all make your way to the house. Thank you very much. Sam, uh, let's go. We're here to celebrate an engagement party, not to talk about other people's affairs. Mother, um, I want you to be there. I want you to hear what father has to say. Is there something I can do for you, Julie? <laughs> well, we'll discuss that later. But at the moment, it's your duty, if not distinct pleasure as hostess, to introduce me so I can toast the loving couple. What's that in your pocket? Nothing. I'm just glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it uh, looks like a newspaper. If I, this? Oh, oh yes. Hmm. Well. well. What is it? Have you uh, read it? No, I'll get to it after I toast uh, the two of them and uh, start this farce on its downward spiral, which will be accelerated by Father Alistair's moments away from pulling the plug on Ethan and Teresa as well as Louise and Sheridan. So, anyway, let's all go lift a glass, shall we? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what did he mean? About Alistair? I have no idea. Ah, but whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Because as soon as Julian reads that headline, Ethan and Teresa will be history. How long can a toast be, right? Three, five minutes max? However long it takes, we are not going to miss our rendezvous with destiny. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I've been waiting my whole life for this night. You keep on playing with fire like that, and you will get burned. Don't you think I know it, Pilar? I can't help it. I, I get close to Sam, and I, I lose my mind. I don't know what I'm saying. I sure hope Julian isn't long-winded tonight. God, I'm ready to get out of here. What about you, Grace? Say, if I were you, I wouldn't say anything. Just back off, all right? Yeah, you're right. Where is Eve? I haven't seen her in a while. What kind of beast would willingly destroy his daughter's happiness? Don't you have even a shred of humanity? Let's dispense with the name calling, shall we? Have you forgotten who I am? I know what you are. I'm a crane. The crane. As if I care who you are or what power that you wield. You have no right to do this to your daughter. 
What a Luis who's good-hearted and hard-working. He's trash. No, he's not, damn it. He's a decent man, something you'll never be, Alistair. I must say, I'm amused to hear you use the word decent, Eve. I'm not going to let you destroy them. If you actually think you can stop it, you're even more deluded than I thought. All you've managed to do is delay the inevitable for a few minutes. I had it in mind it would be fun to play the tape one-on-one, -on -one, hear Luisa's reaction. But come to think of it, there's a way I can get an even bigger reaction before the party's over. I think it's time you trade that thing in for a new one, Green. Hey, this is cutting-edge technology. I built it myself. Got the instructions off the internet. Whoa! There must be some serious heavy-duty evil in here. If only I could see it. It's obviously a mass of some serious, serious negative psychic energy. Save me, Kay! Excuse me, Joey. I'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> friends, um, and there's a general perception out there that we cranes are infallible and perfect. In truth, we're not. Occasionally, we make a mistake, uh, but we're also quick to rectify it. Uh, we believe in that grand old baseball adage, it ain't over till it's over. And believe me, folks, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. How's he talking? You're asking the wrong person. I never could figure out my brother. As the song says, we've only just begun. What do you think, Pilar? Will Sam tell Grace that he was the man I was madly in love with? I hope not. I have this awful feeling that tonight's going to turn into a disaster. Grace. I have to tell you everything. It's time to be... Now, look, Sam, don't tell me anything. Because the more I think about it, the more I don't want to know. You know. If I happen to know this man, I could never look him in the eyes again. I mean, I couldn't bear to be in the same room with him, knowing what he's done to his wife. You want to talk to Julian? Fine. Get your butt in the foyer after he finishes his speech. And ask him anything you like. Great. Thanks. Damnation, Timmy. I could box your ears for this. Well, what? What did Timmy do? You took everything in my memoirs and put it straight into this book, word for bloody word. I suddenly got a feeling that we're in terrible danger, Timmy. There's something about this place. As if I've seen it before somewhere, but where? Sheridan and Louise. Not with them, to them. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of it before. What a splendid idea. Instead of playing the tape privately for Louise as I'd intended, I'll play it publicly. What? Over the mansion's speaker system, so everyone at the party can hear. I am just so very proud of this young man, my son. 
And I might also add that I have every confidence in his ability to one day lead the Crane Empire to even greater heights. Make no mistake, Ethan Crane is his own man. But the most important thing in the world to him is that he is a Crane, my son. I love you, Ethan. Love you too, Father. the Korean Empire because I had sacrificed my life so that he could have everything. To my son and his future bride's happiness. Here, here. Here, here. Congratulations. Here, here. Why didn't Julian mention Teresa's name? Is uh, there anyone else who would like to say something? Yeah, I would, Mr. Crane. I need to talk to you. This is it, Gwen. The moment we have been waiting for. Ah, all hell is about to break loose. <laughs>